He's finally mellowing out. Can Ronk do that? Can Ronk mellow out? I guess he can. He's doing it right here. Somebody hollow that my poor hands have hold. A poor feet have traveled a hot dusty road. Out of your dust bowl and westward we roll. Your deserts were high. Mike's Music Method. Ta! Today we're bringing another Dave Van Ronk tune. We're getting the ronk out here at 107.79 HKVWX The V with Mike at Mike's Music Method. We're getting the ronk out. We're doing Pastures of Plenty by Dave Van Ronk. This song was brought to you by the amazing Dusty. D Dusty, Dusty, you are amazing. Dusty is amazing at sponsoring songs here at Mike's Music Method. Don't know the guy, never met the fella, but he's somehow dear to my heart. Dusty, we're wishing you the best. Everyone who's watching this video and learning, comment down below thanking Dusty, please. Call you back in two minutes. All right, bye. That was my friend Rhino who interrupted. I like Rhino too. This is one of these tunes where Dusty requested it, and when Dusty requests a song, I get on top of it. So I listened to the song this morning, spent several hours tabbing it out because it's hard to know what's going on, and I realize he's not in standard tuning, he's in open D. And he's not just in open D, he's in open D with the capo on the second fret. Whoo! It's not a beginner piece, so check out the Travis Picking playlist and start there to all you newbies to finger picking. Um, if you start in that playlist, watch like the first 10 videos, and you will be a competent picker, and you'll be darn near ready to tackle this one. By the end of this video, you, you're, it's just a great song. You're going to have some real cool chops going up the neck. Um, you're going to have this cool heavy thumb approach. You're going to learn a lot from this song because Dave is really giving us the ronk. He's giving, he's making it ronky. It's just awesome, guys. There's actually a lot of really cool tricks and things that I wouldn't do in my playing that took me quite a while to figure out what exactly he was doing. It's an awesome song. Go listen to it and let's learn it. If you're new to Mike's Music Method, I always say timestamps are down below. I have no idea your skill level. Some people are really good. Some people aren't so good. So the timestamps are your best friends. Jump ahead, rewind, and go at your own pace. At the end of the video, due to popular demand, all my more recent videos, way at the end, I do slow runs. And I, that's what we do. I run through each section very slowly. So when you learn the intro, jump to the slow run. When you learn the verse, jump to the slow run at the end of the video. And I try to remind you throughout, if you want to be a good player, you've got to take these in tiny bites. Get the microscope. Master one measure at a time. I'm not joking. Don't move on from measure one until you absolutely know measure one. That sounds tedious and annoying, but I promise you it is the way to success. Without further ado, let's do it. Thank you, Dusty. Pastures of Plenty, Dave Van Ronkenstein. Getting the ronk out, Q107.5, The Blaze FM, Chicago, Philadelphia, Mike's Music Method, yeah, yeah. Boom, this song is in open D, but we have the capo on the second fret, so it's like open E. Keep in mind, when you put the capo on, always retune, because sometimes you get capo pinch. We've got E, B, E again. Sorry, this fourth string sounds horrible. I've been meaning to get new strings the last, like, five videos I've done here. Then a G sharp, another B, and another open E. A note, before we do measure one, if you're a beginner, well, there's something good to note for everybody, which is the whole tone whole tune he's just going six and four with the thumb nice open sound and we do a lot of great lead work up high not really lead work but you know what i mean cool little melody stuff um now ron gets excited and he has a really heavy thumb fairly often on beat three and four and most of the time when he's doing that heavy thumb we have to have our third fret down on the third string and i'm using my middle finger so he'll hit six but often he's has a heavy thumb and he'll hit like four and three together, sometimes four, three, and two. Every once in a while, the thumb's hitting all of them, but we'll talk about that when it comes up. Just note, if you're going to consistently do that heavy thumb, you're
you're going to want that finger down. If you want to keep it real easy and just learn it without it, that's fine, but just keep them both open. Measure one. What we're doing, we're pinching six and one. That's it. Then we're going to do that heavy thumb. So my thumb's hitting four and three. That's it. And I'm doing thumb middle, heavy thumb. Then after that, I go back to the six, and then I do pointer finger open on the second string. But here we have a compound movement. I'm gonna hammer on to the third fret, and I'm using my ring finger there. But the moment I hammer on, I'm hitting the thumb on the fourth string. So I'm only hammering on the second, not playing the second again, but just playing the thumb on the fourth. I always call that a compound movement, but my buddy Anders, who did this amazing Mississippi John Hurt artwork, he says he calls them giddy ups. And I love that, so I think I'm gonna adopt that language where you have the giddy up. It's like you're hammering on, but you're not fretting the hammered string, you're fretting, or sorry, you're not plucking the fretted, you're not plucking the hammer on. <laughs> I'm just making you more confused. Hammering on to the second, but the moment I hammer on to the second, I'm sounding the fourth. Giddy up, giddy up. Compound movement now known as the giddy up. So that whole measure together, three, four, Notice at the end, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know if he's doing another heavy thumb. Sometimes he's just hitting the fourth. Sometimes he's doing it heavy. So it's up to you. I'm just keeping that third finger down. So if I accidentally go a little too aggressive with my thumb, it's sounding, it's not sounding that bright major chord, but rather just keeping that darker by doubling the fifth. Second measure is the same. Third measure is the same. No, it's not. That's the one that changes. So measure three here, it starts the same pinch, heavy thumb, but then we immediately go back to the first string. So it's one, two, and is my rhythm. Six and one, heavy thumb, back to one. That's the first half of the measure. Then I end it the same way. Thumb on six, pointer, with that compound motion. So three, four. So measure four, I believe, should be identical to one and two, but on this um, recorded version I have, I think it's the studio one, he, he makes a mistake, Dave flubs it a little bit, and he accidentally, when he does the hammer on, he like gets excited, and he, I don't know how this happens, but he accidentally like hits his pointer finger onto the second fret of the D string. It's like not a full sound, it's almost like he just touches it, I'm a nut and I put it in the tab, but you should probably just play the thing open, but I can't help but obsess and be a purist. This time I admit probably to my, you know, to my disadvantage. So let's put those first four together now that we got them. Three, four. Sounds more like a mistake than intentional. Measure five is the same as three. Six, he's just playing with the rhythm, but same basic idea. Just pinch six and one, heavy thumb. Six, one, heavy thumb. So new material, but just playing with the rhythm. And measure seven, he's just playing with the rhythm once again. Pinch, six and one, heavy thumb, and here's where we put the and on the second string. And that's where we do our giddy up. With a hammer on, and then I'm hitting the sixth string there. So six and one, heavy thumb, pointer on the second, hammer on the third fret at the same time hitting the low E. And then we go back to one. Then it ends on a heavy thumb. So real slow, three. stamps are down below now would be the perfect time to go down to the ending of this video where I do the slow run-throughs just go to slow run-through intro and make sure you got that measure one to seven feeling really good before you move on
I know some of you are old here, but it's worth me repeating. And for you newbies, you have to hear this. As your music teacher, I would much rather have you play three measures really, really awesome than for you to go to head and do all the way like measure one through 20 really sloppy. So maybe those first three measures takes you a week. That's totally fine. If you're a beginner and you're like jumping ahead of yourself, maybe those first three measures takes you three weeks. But that is the way to learn. You want to act like masterfully execute these things, get that muscle memory down, be able to play it without really thinking about it, then move on from there. I know it seems tedious at first, but I promise you, you're going to learn this stuff so much better if you approach it that way. Here we start with the verse in measure eight. Melody's just mimicking that, right? It's a mighty hard rule that these hard hands have who. So let's do this. This part was confusing to me, and you'll know what I'm talking about because that note that, that we're sounding there, um, we could play that on the third fret of the first string. Uh, I know we're in a crazy tuning, but you'd forget tuning in capo, that would be a G, right? Third fret. Or you could play it here, which would be on the eighth fret. It's the same note. But what I've decided is we're gonna do it up on eight. Because there's times in the song where you almost hear them both ringing together and you're hearing that nice dissonance with the bend. So I'm pretty sure he's doing it here. So I'm way on the eighth fret. I know that's going to look goofy with capo on the second, right? Three, five, six, seven, eight. It's actually 10 if you ignore the capo. It's always hard to count, um, but know that it's eight above the capo. It looks like two before your double dot. And then I'm doing my ring finger there and my pointer fingers on the fifth fret. So I have both of those down, pointer, uh, pointer and ring. What we're doing here, I'm pinching six and two with thumb and pointer in a very slight bend. He gets aggressive with the bend later in the song, but here he's just not even a half bend, just a real slight bend. So six and two, thumb on four, then immediately play that top string with your middle finger. It's the first half of the measure. And the rhythm is one, two, then the second half of the measure, back to thumb on six, back to pointer on the second string, and then thumb on four. Just three and four, that's it. So the whole measure, three, four. Again. Yeah. Now measure nine, it's kind of a big leap, but not really, don't view it that way, because we have this moment of open and open on the six, first and sixth string. And we're using that moment to lock into our position again, where I'm gonna put um, this finger down for the heavy thumb, right, third fret, G string. And then my ring's gonna hammer underneath it. And again, if you want to do pointer and hammer your, your uh, middle, that's fine too. I find it easier to do it that way. So I got six and one open here in measure nine, heavy thumb, then our giddy up, second string's open, hammer's on the three, while I play the sixth string afterwards. So it's pinch, thumb, giddy up, then right back to the first string open. I'm doing that with my middle finger. Giddy up, and then a heavy thumb. I don't know why I'm talking you through that because we've seen that in the intro. Measure 10 is the same as eight, which we just did a moment ago. Then back to the same thing here. Does it twice. We've seen all that before. 13's a little bit different, no hammer on. Here we just have a pinch, six and one, heavy thumb, right back to the first string. And then the second half of the measure is six, two, heavy thumb. So all together, three, four. Again, the intro is all very similar. He's just playing on the rhythmic possibilities within that one little chord and framework. I don't say this enough. Guys, I have an ebook, an interactive ebook called Strum It Like a Cowboy. If you are looking to strum the guitar, this may not apply to Dave Von Ronk. Pastures of Plenty because he's a finger picker. I'm working on my finger picking ebook, by the way. But check out Strum It Like a Cowboy. And y'all, I also started doing workshops, six week workshops hosted by yours truly, all on finger picking. It's amazing. The first two workshops are going awesome. 
I will launch new workshops again in probably three weeks or so. So check out mikesmusicmethod.com for the ebook and the workshops. Cool. Now we're on to measure 14 here where he starts the next little phrase. Uh, my four feet has traveled that hard and a road. Really cool slide work there. I don't know the, the words in the medley that well, so bear with my singing. Really cool. So again, we can be super loose. The thumb's just going back and forth. Don't need the left hand for that. And we're sliding at the beginning from five to seven. So I'm pinching six and one. I got the fifth fret down, sliding up to seven, and thumb alone on four. And I go right back to that first string. So pinch, like that. Pinching six and one, thumb on four, back to one. Then, second half of the measure, back to six, going up to 10. You can use your pinky or your ring finger. Six, one, and four is open. Just looks like that at the end. Thumb, middle, thumb. So that whole measure, three. One thing to note, I call all of this the X factor stuff, which is the stuff that's beyond the tab. Sometimes it's even hard to hear. But listen to how, which, which notes, which melody notes he's letting ring out versus which he's cutting short. Like that seven ends after the slide. And then he plays it again clean. It's not this. Subtle difference, but man, after you like learn how to play the song, Start really hyper obsessing on when he's cutting notes off and when he's letting them ring, and that's really going to make your playing pop. Anyway, so that's third, or that's fourteen, real slow together. Three, four, up to ten. Five to seven, seven again, up to ten. Measure fifteen. We slide back down from seven to five. Kind of the same as the beginning of the last measure. Pinching six and one. And I slide, thumb does four. But then right after that, I do the second string with my pointer, and I've got the eighth fret down. Remember that five and eight from the verse, the beginning of the verse? It's pinching, fourth, and then hit the second string there. And the second half of the measure is just six, one, four. Thumb, middle finger plays that fifth fret there, and thumb again. So all together. Sixteen is the same as fourteen. Slide back up. Seventeen, we slide up again, almost as if he's going to repeat the measure. But it ends different. So it starts the same, which all, all of this is the same. But instead of going to ten, we just do six, two, four, and they're all open. So three, four. is almost identical. Here he gets that heavy thumb in there. So it starts the same. Yeah, and then this is even the same. Six, two. But he just hits a really heavy thumb at the end. Almost hitting all the strings. He's at least hitting three of them. But I think I'm catching that open, that open E sounding on top. So three, four. And he does um, the previous measure again. So 19 is going to look like 16. Then we've seen this before. I get confused calling out all the measures, but we've seen all this. 21. Here in 22, it's a little bit different. Hard to know here if he's hammering on or sliding. Um, because we're never, we don't have to go up to the 10. It's not like you need to slide. He might just be hammering. This sounds pretty darn identical. So if you want to keep sliding, that's totally fine. Slide or hammer is fine here. The ending's a little different. We're pinching six and one with the hammer on or the slide. So that all looks the same. Then we have six and here he's brushing. He's doing a, a heavy brush. So instead of just hitting the second string, he's also hitting the third. But then it's followed by a heavy thumb on the way down. So for a moment you get this illusion of like strumming. 
And if you're not really consistent with your fingers, it can be confusing, but just remember to keep that down, up, down, up. Thumb's always playing on the down. The other fingers, pointer and middle, are playing on the upbeat. So that's how I'm kind of fra framing that in my mind. Pointer, heavy thumb. Cool. Ronk is quite good at that technique. 23 is really similar. He's just extending that chord a bit longer. What we're doing there, six and one. Then he does the heavy thumb. But right immediately back to one. Six and one, heavy thumb, right back to one. The second half of the measure is six, two, heavy thumb. So that whole measure, three, four. And once you practice this song a bunch, man, is that a fun technique and you can start being really loose and making it sound dirty and uh, wait till the little instrumental bridge because it, it gets fun. He gets real loose and heavy handed. Shaboom, donation pitch. Guys, Mike's Music Method operates on the value for value model. Now would be a perfect time to consider helping your buddy Mike out. It's tax season, it's upon us. Duh, I'm saying it, sorry. Uh, but for real, guys, I give you my time, my talent, and treasure. This channel is a labor of love. Lots of man hours and brain power is going into it. And, and talent, God-given and hard-worked talent, hard-earned. And so what I'm asking you guys is to abide, be a dude, and abide by the value for value model, which means anyone who is hard on their time, can hard on their luck, financial, dire straits, can go over to mikesmusicmethod.com, sign up for the Freddy Freeloader plan, get all the tabs, quote unquote, for free. You know what I mean? It's not really free because I'm working for it. But it's the honor system. If you're not hard on times and you can spare some money and you realize the value I'm giving you, this might be worth 100 bucks a month, right? In lieu of guitar lessons, you're watching these videos. Maybe it's 50 bucks a month, 20 bucks a month to Mike Music's, me Mike's Music Method. Whatever you can afford, every time you learn a song, 10 bucks, I don't know, it's called the value for value model because you get to decide. I'm here to encourage you to decide to give a good amount because it is a true labor and I wanna keep doing these and making these and of course I wanna be rewarded for my effort and that's it. It's the value for value model. Please consider and onward with the song. Measure 24, some new stuff, but I think you guys are getting the hang of it. At least I hope so. If you're not, stop, right? You wanna make sure some of those previous measures are easy. Otherwise building on is, is just gonna make it confusing. But once you have them dialed in here, let's keep going. Here we go back to that 5-8 idea in a 24. So I'm going to hammer on five to seven here. Definitely not a slide. We're back to this hammer on idea. Pitching six and one, five to seven, thumb alone, right back to the first string. And I've got to, I want to take it from seven back to five. So I'm lifting it back up. Pinching, thumb alone, back to the pointer finger on the first string. Second half of the measure here is just six, two, and I'm on the eighth fret. So I guess sometimes I'm using my pinky, but it rings fine. I'm just doing six, two, four, thumb, pointer, thumb. Three, four. And here's the, the moment where I noticed he probably was doing that eight here instead of like, a, right, you could slide it down to three. And I think there's a moment when this in the song when he does, but there's other times where I'm swear, where I swear I'm hearing that the dissonance of them both ringing. It's really cool. 25 we've seen before. It's got that giddy up on the and beat of two. Pinch, thumb, pointer, hammer on and thumb at the same time there. Yeah, we've seen this measure before. And we got those two nice heavy thumbs on beat two and four. 26, again, slightly different, but we kind of seen it before. We're just climbing up to that 5-8 idea. He's pinching six and one, and he's got the third fret down here. 
The reason I'm doing third and not eight is because we're coming from this third fret. It'd be really hard to jump up there. I suppose you could, but it's easier to just stay here. Hit, hit six and one together, getting that third fret. Thumb alone. And I'm using that moment of thumb alone to go up to the fifth, fifth fret on the first string. So pinch, thumb on fourth, pointer back on the first string, but now it's the fifth fret. Back to six, then pointers on the second string, and I should have time to snag that eight. Then thumb on the fourth. Three, four. Again, I suppose if you don't want those two to ring out, it's pretty subtle. You could just do five, three. That might be way easier. If you want to do that, right, print out your tab, mark it up, as opposed to. It's quite a bit more work just to get a moment of that dissonance. You're totally fine doing it here. Three, five, three. So that eight on the second string just becomes a three on the first. Totally fine adjustment. Point seven we've seen before. And 28 is really weird, super subtle, but it's cool. It's just a use of that heavy pointer finger. So in 28, we're pinching, heavy thumb. It almost sounds like there's another extra note, and there is, but it's just because he's doing a really heavy pointer finger where he's hitting the top three or four strings. He's brushing like that, and we still have the hammer on. So it's pinch, heavy thumb, followed by a heavy pointer with a hammer on. It's kind of cool because you have that giddy up in there as well, right? Heavy pointer, the same time you hammer, you're throwing down your thumb on the sixth string. And then it's right back to the first string with the middle finger. And another heavy thumb. Twenty-nine we've seen before. without that heavy pointer. Shaboom! That's basically the entire tune. Now is another perfect moment to stop, go down below, slow run verse, because that's pretty much the whole song. He does that, I think, two or three more times. And then in your tab, which is free at mikesmusicmethod.com, we will go to measure 31, which is where the instrumental part starts at 223. Now the chords are pretty much the same. He's using the same idea, except he's he's getting a bit raunchier, ronkier, ronkier. Mr. Van Ronk is getting the ronk on, which is what he does, and this part is really cool. So let's take the time to learn it, but only if you've done those slow run-throughs and you feel really confident about the previous material. I'm gonna go quick. I'm not really gonna talk you through in too much detail, except where it's necessary, because as you promised, you would, you're would you good at the other stuff, right? You already have the verse down solid before you're here. Here he's just being more liberal with his bending here in measure 31. He's really bending those eights. Shaboom! I screwed up, guys. I had finished recording the tutorial. I'm traveling back in time. I messed up the tab. I don't want to redo the whole thing because then every time in the video when I'm saying like measure 36, measure 37, it's going to be the wrong measure. So just make a note here. I failed to include the correct measure 34. So when you're in the tab, free at mikesmusicmethod.com, we've got 31, which we just played through, 32, 33, 34 should actually go back to 32. And then, you know, 34 would actually be 35. Where you do that weird one. So I wrote that in there. Sorry about that. Just put a big star when you print out your tab. In between 33 and 34, there's, there's a, a ghost measure <laughs> that you're going to insert. And that ghost measure that goes after 33 is the same as measure 32. I just failed to put it in there. And... Again, I don't, the tab's going to be wrong, but I, I want the tab to more closely match the measure numbers of the video because that would be even more confusing. 
So just note there's a ghost measure. It's noted on your tab when you printed it out. So that's it. Just put a big star there so you don't mess it up. 34 is kind of goofy. This one, uh, it's hard to hear. This is what I'm hearing. He's still got that, that finger there as if he were doing the heavy thumb, but he's also putting the fifth fret down on the first string. Now I know I was doing it with the heavy thumb part with the middle finger, but now we need to get the fifth fret. That's hard to do. So here I have to break my, what I was doing before and I use my pointer finger, third fret, third string, and pinky or ring finger, fifth fret of the high string. Six and one are open and I'm using that moment to get ready to put that kind of weird chord down, right? Three and five that I just told you. And it's a heavy thumb there. And I'm doing six, one, and a heavy thumb again. Real weird sounding dissonance there. And it starts to build up. So 35, we've seen all this before, except we're doing heavy thumb and heavy pointer. So check this out. We're doing that five to seven slide, pinching six and one, but I'm letting my thumb be real liberal with what it's hitting there. Then I do a heavy thumb, back to a heavy pointer. And a heavy pointer when I get up to 10 as well. So again, we've seen this measure. But now, all my thumbs are going to be heavy on beat 3 and 4. And all my pointers are going to be heavy every time I do the melody. Which is really cool sounding. And the next measure. Here he's not. I'm not hearing him go to 8 on the second string. Instead, we're going down to 3. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But we're sliding 7 to 5. Then 3 back to five, and it ends on a heavy thumb. So real slow, three, four. There I pulled off, but again, you could slide too. Just remember it ends on that heavy thumb. I should have made a note at the beginning, maybe I'll go back and edit, but this would be a great song to use a thumb pick um, I have some linked down, right, affiliate links underneath in the description below to my favorite ones. I love these like Fred something bumble picks, right? They look like a bumblebee color-wise because it's adjustable this way and adjustable this way and that way, which doesn't seem like it'd come in handy, but for some reason I always angle it a little bit and it just feels more like I'm how I would normally hold a pick because I played guitar for, you know, a long time with just a pick before a finger pick. So I'm used to doing all my leads. Wow, I forgot I'm in open tuning. <laughs> so I'm used to doing all my leads with a pick. Uh, so these these just feel naturally to me because it's like a hybrid. I could finger pick with it. And then, you know what I mean? Like I could do my alternate picking. Am I playing some kind of weird harmonic minor? Anyway, these are great. Get whatever thumb pick you want. If you want to, you know, give me like 0 0.03 cents, you can do it through the through the link I provided down below. But any thumb pick is good. But what's nice about them is it's easy to do that heavy thumb. Uh, get the idea. I need to rehearse this song, but that sounds way cooler and way more aggressive with the thumb pick. Measure 37 is pretty awesome. It's almost identical to how he normally does it in the verse, except he's taking advantage of the heavy thumb to play the 10, and he's giving us one more seven. So watch this, we slide into the seven, hit the seven again. Then normally when we go up to 10, he's hitting the seven again with the pointer, and he's letting the thumb do that heavy 10. Love it. Three, four. Let's keep going, 38. There he's ending it just open and open, heavy pointer at the end, heavy thumb, otherwise it's the same. And 39 stays pretty stagnant here. So we'll, we'll talk through that, it's a little weird. Pinching, then a heavy thumb. Thumb again, heavy pointer, doing two and 
three and a heavy thumb, but I'm, I, the chord's been lifted. Thirty-five to thirty-nine repeats right there, and he keeps going with this instrumental part. A little bit of an ending before we go back to the verse, and it looks like this. We've seen that before, I think. Yeah, hammer on five to seven, back to five, then we go to the eight, and he bends it here for sure. Then back to the part we've seen with one little adjustment. Ronk is good, attention to detail, this guy does it. We get this unexpected hammer on it, it's the only time it happens in the song, where instead of just hammering on there, we get that cool low uh, hammer on the D. So check this out, six and one, thumb alone on four, immediately to the second string, and normally it's a compound movement just like that, right? The giddy up, giddy up, but here, we're hammering on both of those threes, which is really cool. I suppose you could do it with your thumb over the top. I'm on a nylon, so to do it like this is actually quite tricky, but I imagine on a steel string it's a lot easier, or you can do your thumb over the top. Then it's resolved immediately going back to the first string, then thumb on four, so real slow. Three, four, Almost sounds like a modern blues sound, doesn't it? Yeah, I like that. 42 we've seen before with the bends on eight. A little bit weird here in 43 um, because we come out of those bends. And you think it'd be open, but he hangs on to the fifth fret here when he pinches. Oops, sorry. Um. So after that pinch, I'm pinching six and one, the fifth fret down, then open on the fourth string. And what I'm doing there, I'm getting that middle finger down on the third fret. I'm gonna do a heavy thumb at the end, so I just want it to be there. That's when I'm planting it. That's kind of the tricky part. I suppose if you wanted to, you could hammer both of these together, right? This middle one isn't sounding. Maybe that's easier to think about. It's always these like unsung notes that are sometimes harder to prepare your hand for. Yeah, I'm gonna hammer both of these, even though I'm only sounding the second string. That's how I'm gonna get my hand in place, so I don't have to like put that and put that right after. That's more confusing. Right back to the first string, then a heavy thumb. And his thumb's pretty darn heavy there, but he's not getting the third fret on that B string, so that ring finger's coming up. So it sounds like that at the end, just the third fret on the G string. So three, four, hitting those three, at least the second, third, and fourth string, but you can hit the high E if you want to. Yeah. And then 44 and 45, you have seen before. And make sure always after that hammer on, you're lifting it back up so the heavy thumb sounds it open instead of third fret. Awesome, go down, slow run, instrumental verse. Take your time, do that before moving on. But the good news is we're not really moving on because it just goes back to the verse. But this time, instead of running through the whole verse, I mean, we do most of it, but then we go to the coda. So we jump back to 45, 46, measure 47. And it's super easy, so let's just put it together here. Here it's no heavy thumb. So you don't need to worry about planting that uh, third fret on the third string because he's not doing a heavy thumb here. He's finally mellowing out. Can Ronk do that? Can Ronk mellow out? I guess he can, he's doing it right here. Then he just 
extends with the pinch, and then he does that weird chord again. And that's where I was more confident of what he was doing in that instrumental part, because at the end it's a bit clearer, and I'm definitely hearing open, 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 three, open, five. Oh, that's how I reset when I need a break. Slow runs. Let's do the intro. One, two, three, four. slow for measure eight. One, two, three, four. If that was a little too fast still, go to the little gear icon if you're on the browser, on a desktop or a laptop. And then not only can you change the playback speed to 0.75, but when you do that, look up in the corner. There's a little custom button in the top right corner of the small box <laughs> that'll say custom. And there you can do 0.95, 0.9, and gauge it like that. There's also all sorts of cool... Um, there's other apps where you can put in the actual song and change it by any increment you want with with very little distortion It's it's pretty cool um, So you have questions on that. I don't know. They're out there. I think the one on my phone is like speed changer or something like that um, I did purchase this one called transcribe exclamation point, which is a great program as well Slow run through the instrumental part measure 31. It's like 2 minutes and 20 seconds in the song One, two, three, four. sloppy I know and you all should really join the discord I'm on there quite a bit responding to people's inquiries we get to know each other but we're also posting videos uh, giving helpful feedback constructive criticism on our playing and picking so it's a great way to stay in touch get some accountability for your picking and just meet some of those fellow pickers who are consuming uh, finger picking content here at MMM uh, the Mike's Music Method Discord link is down below in the video description